Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Danny Ritchie again here at GR Research and we're doing another video today. We've got a good one lined up for you. As you guys know, we started this out doing the Tuesday Tech Talks that we did with New Record Day and we went through a lot of fundamentals, a lot of basics, laid the groundwork for a lot of what we do and how we do it and, and showed you guys basically how to build and upgrade speakers. And then we went straight into doing a lot of upgrades. We were upgrading a lot of commercial speakers that customers were sending in. And there were speakers like the, the uh, clip speakers that we did quite a few upgrades on those models. And we sent out a ton of those upgrades. So I appreciate all you guys that are getting your feet wet now with DIY and kind of learning how to, how to do this stuff, how to put networks together. I know you guys have had a lot of fun with it. And, um, but I still had a lot of guys that were sending me in stuff that were just not worth upgrading. I mean, a lot of it was just not there. The driver quality, the, the frequency response was so wrecked that it just didn't make any sense. Even if I did a, a perfect network for it, it's still not going to be worth more than what it costs in parts and the time to start doing that stuff to it. And there's just a lot of those speakers out there. Some of them are just not worth it. And another thing I've had even this week, I probably had 20 people ask me about upgrading their speakers and upgrading the drivers that are in the speakers. In other words, can I swap out this woofer for that woofer or change this tweeter? Can I upgrade the drivers in my speaker? And the answer to that is always no. No, you can't just swap out drivers. As soon as you change from one driver to another, the frequency response is completely different. You have to design a whole new crossover. Uh, finding drivers even that fit the same holes are almost impossible, let alone that fit the hole and have the same teal small parameters that will work properly in that airspace with that tuning. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. So that was one of the reasons that last week we did one of our kits. And I said, here's an alternative to upgrading commercial speakers for you guys that really like doing this DIY stuff. Here's what you can do and here's some of our kits. And I showed you guys the uh, Ecstatic kit, which is one of my personal favorites. It's a great sounding speaker. And uh, you guys went nuts over that thing. I think it's had over 50,000 views. We sold about 20 or more of those kits just last week. And um, I appreciate all of you guys who watched, all the comments. I uh, got great feedback on that stuff. A lot of you that own those posted and talked about them. And, I know that's, uh, that's one of my favorites, and for all you guys who built them, I know it's one of your favorites too. But this week I also got lots and lots of messages from you guys saying, man, I'd love to build those, or I wish I had those, but I don't have the means to build the cabinets. Do you have those in a flat pack, or do you have cabinets for them? And I had to say, no, I don't have a flat pack. I don't have cabinets for them. I know a lot of you guys said you live in apartments. You don't have tools or access to the equipment that you need to cut and build a bunch of speakers. And you keep asking me, do you have anything that's completed? This week I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something for all of you guys who've been asking me about something completed. I've got it right here next to me and right behind me. Uh, these are some speakers that we designed for Carnegie Acoustics. Now, first let me give you a little background. How did Carnegie, Acoustic, Carnegie Acoustics come about? Well, a guy named Ron May approached me years ago who was big in the audio industry and he was huge in car stereo and made Dr. Crankenstein a household name, shipped that stuff all over the country, and he was really big into car audio way back in the day, and he, God just loves music. He loves audio, he loves the whole market, and just was just itching and dying to get back into it, and he had some great ideas. He came to me with the idea of designing a product line for him that were speakers that didn't look like speakers. Speakers that look like furniture, speakers that look nice, speakers that look like little pedestals, but that sounded good. Uh, challenge accepted. We did that, and it worked out really well, and at the same time we launched what's called, um, that was his uh, contemporary line, and we launched what's called the classic line, which was these models here, the CST-1s. There was a small bookshelf version and a little center channel, all based on kits that I had already done. It's based on the N1 kit, based on the N3S and based on the N3, the CST1 here, based on the N3. And his idea was, of course, to go right back and do it the same way it was always done, and that was take that product straight to the stores. 
and to get reps out there to rep the product through the rest of the United States. And so that's the way he originally went at it. Of course, it's not the 80s anymore, and the market is just not what it used to be. Stores aren't buying product like they used to. They, didn't, they don't just buy into product lines and stock that stuff and sell it and have people walking in. And it just doesn't work that way anymore. Uh, people shop online. Uh, people look for deals online. It's, it's just not, just not the way it was back in the 80s. The, those big high-end stores that used to service you, you can go in and listen to four different turntables and cartridges all in one day and have fun and have real audio files there that were good service people that would wait on you and sell you stuff. It just doesn't happen that much anymore. There's just very few of those stores left in the whole country. Uh, there's a few heavily populated areas that can still support some of those stores, but they don't buy product anymore. A lot of that really expensive stuff is on there on consignment. So the stores that were that stuff was taken to love the product. They said, yeah, great, but they're not ordering product and stocking product anymore. It's just not that, not that way anymore. So um, it was then decided maybe we should rethink how this is marketed. And then this whole container load of this product arrived and there were some issues with it. The, um, the guys over in China that were doing the assembly work on this stuff didn't install the insulation in it properly. And we gave them specific instructions of where it all needed to be. They just threw a little polyfill in uh, like you see in most speakers, it wasn't done properly. They pushed uh, or used push-on connectors to connect the wiring to all the drivers, just slip on. Um, we specifically asked that that not be done. We don't want those little pieces of tin in the signal path degrading the signal. And uh, those things fall off and they're just they're a mess. We don't want that in the signal path. We want the wiring soldered straight to the terminal so that it secures, so it makes a good connection, so it sounds the best. They didn't do that. So, Carnegie's thinking, what do we do then with all these speakers? We have a, a full container load of these things that weren't done properly. And the stores weren't buying product. Do we open all these up one by one and go in and fix every one of them? Or do we ship the whole shipment over to Danny and let him sell them direct to his customers and just slash the price down to below dealer cost and let the customer do the work? Because it's easy work to do. And that was what was decided upon. So these models here uh, need a little help when you get them, and it's real easy to do. And I'm going to show these guys to you here and tell you a little bit about the speakers. Uh, like I said, it's based on my N3 model. This is a MTM design. It is using the BG planar magnetic tweeter, and it actually is the BG tweeter, and it has a deep back cup on it. So it was the OEM version of that tweeter. Um, the woofers were based on my M130. Uh, they were made in China. They did do a good job on them. It's a polymer chassis, paper cone, has a really smooth response, and they do sound really good. Sensitivity was just a little down for my M130s, but overall, really good sounding drivers. They matched really well with the tweeters. These are 16 ohm drivers in parallel, so you're right back to an easy 8 ohm load. So easy to drive. Um, Finish, as you can see, it's beautiful piano finish. And we did a little slanted shape. You can see this one here behind me. It's slanted three degrees. Has a nice look. The grills, as I just showed you, are held on magnetically. You don't see anything on the back side. They're done beautifully. Um, there is a beautiful velour cover that they come in and have the Carnegie Acoustics logo embroidered on them. They're double boxed. There's foam wedges around them. They ship well. They look beautiful. Uh, it's a great speaker and by design I specified all the parts and it's got no junk inside. All the inductors are all large gauge air core inductors. All the caps are polypropylene capacitors. Um, there's no sand cast resistors in there in the signal path. All non-inductive wire round resistors. There's even Gen 2 Sonic cap bypass caps on the capacitors on the tweeter circuit. So really nice stuff top to bottom. I'm going to spin these, this one around and let you guys take a look at it. The black piano finish is so slick. It's like a black mirror. I know as soon as I turn this, and it was hard to get this position so that they weren't reflecting light because there are windows that are all behind you guys here on the other side of the camera. I've got the blinds pulled, but as soon as I turn this, you're going to see a lot of reflections because that's how good the finish is. It's a beautiful finish. Um, 
But I want to show you guys also the tube connectors on the back. No cheesy binding posts. Tube connectors were custom done, custom colors that match. This opening here is the rear termination for the transmission line, which means that there is a pattern of, of bracing that runs through this thing and out the bottom where it gets progressively smaller as it gets down to the bottom. This tunes the speaker a little bit lower than you could with a port. Uh, the output is rather large. It's like a humongous port back here, so there's no port noise. And the 3 dB down point on these is 40 hertz, so these things are flat right down there to the, a good range. Base is tight, base is clean. The transmission line loads these things really well. Good vocals, good bass response, tremendous overall speaker. Um, these things retailed in stores at $2,000 a pair, and at $2,000 a pair, everybody felt like there was nothing at that price point that outperformed these speakers at two grand. Now they've been slashed. The price for these speakers per pair, I know you guys are gonna ask me, is that per pair? Per pair, it's $899 per pair. Now, like I said, when you get them, there's gonna be a little bit to do. There's gonna be some woofers that you're gonna to wanna to pull out of here and the tweeters we're going to pull out and you're going to add some insulation. I'm going to give you some instructions on where that goes. You can use fiberglass insulation. You can use polyfill. You can order a sheet of no res and you can line this thing with no res. You can order some more sonic caps and while you've got this thing apart, you can pull the network out and replace some of the capacitors with sonic caps. Um, and then that brings the resolution levels up even more. So a great speaker that a lot more can even be done with. Um, I'm going to pause the recording. We're going to lay this thing down on here on the work table and I'm going to pull the drivers out of this thing and I'm going to let you guys see what's inside. All right, just took all the drivers out. That was pretty easy. Like I said, there was just a little push on connectors that were never supposed to be on there. Um, a couple of them just fell off whenever I was taking the drivers out. Um, it was easy to take the drivers out. All you needed was an Allen wrench and um, just be careful not to uh, scratch this beautiful surface. Again, the tweeter is the BG model. It has the deep back cup on it. It's the OEM only version. Uh, the woofers, nice polymer chassis, really well made. Good sounding little woofers. I mean, for what they are, these things are fantastic. And um, the crossover, I don't know if you guys can see it in there or not. There it is way back there in the back. It's um, all polypropylene caps. I thought there was Gen 2 Sonic caps on this, not this model. This one we actually put 0.1 microfarad bypass caps on the tweeter circuit, but they were not Sonic caps. I thought they were Sonic caps, said that earlier. Got to correct that. Um, big air core inductor on the woofer. Uh, still 16 gauge air core inductor on the tweeter. Um, the insulation that they uh, threw in there, they just threw some of this on the sides. Uh, that stuff pr pretty much just falls out of there. I mean, you can just pull it right out. Uh, there is a damper. If you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's, they put a damper on the sides. It's kind of like, um, I'd say kind of like Dynamat, but it's really not the material like Dynamat. It's more like a vinyl floor tile. And they were supposed to put it through the whole box. Well, they put it from about here down, and then the rest of the box from about here down. So they didn't put it everywhere, but it is there. It is pretty dense. It the cabinet is really solid. It's braced everywhere. The transmission line that runs through it has braces going through it, so it's it's solid. It's a it's a really solid box. So resonance issues, not a problem. Uh, pulling this stuff out, not a problem. Cutting these little ends off, one of them fell off when I took it off. Cutting these ends off and stripping it back and soldering it back to the, soldering the drivers on. Piece of cake. Uh, like I said, if you want to upgrade the, the uh, crossover parts to Sonic Caps, just reach straight in there and unscrew it. You can pull it out to about right here where you can uns unsolder the, the two wires that are on it that are connected to the two connectors and just pull the whole thing out. Then you can take, that, uh, take those caps off and just swap them out. It's $180 worth of Sonic Caps if you want to take them to that next level. It definitely improves them in clarity. You're still way ahead. These things retailed for $2,000 originally, and that was a bargain at the time. So like I said, $8.99 for the pair, that's for the pair, is all they cost. Plus shipping, and shipping can vary. It could be $50 to $90 per unit to ship it to you, depending on where you're located. Remember, we're in North Central Texas. So 
that's your deal for this week. Um, to order, you can go on the website on this one. You can click on it and order it right on our website. You can use any credit card or PayPal, or you can just pick up the phone and call and say, I want some of those Carnegie CST1s, and uh, they're boxed up and ready to go. All we got to do is put labels on these things. So there's your deal for the day for all you guys who've been asking for a completed speaker that's at a high quality value that's going to beat all that stuff you can go find at Best Buy or the whatever thrift store and all this, you know, under $1,000 speakers that were built for probably 150 or 200 bucks. This one was actually, there was a lot of money spent on this to build these this way. Um, these cabinets were not cheap and they kind of spared no expense on all the little things. Like I said, two connectors, everything. So for $8.99, there's your deal. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. And um, I've got another video coming. We got another upgrade. Tune in next week to see it. We'll see you guys. Thanks.